Good morning and welcome to your daily dose of your spiritual vitamin with me, Bonnie B. Today we're going to talk about the divine paradox. According to the Kabbalion, which is the study of standard, the study of the Hermetic philosophies of ancient Greece and Egypt, not the three initiates. We're still working on transmuting our mind. And we're working on how to manifest. So since these are things that we are working on, this is where we are. Divine paradox. So if you'll join me right now before the throne of grace, we will pray and then we'll get into our study for today of the divine paradox. In the name of Jesus, Father God, we thank you. We thank you for an opportunity to be able to come once again before the throne of grace and get the information that you have divinely ordained for us to receive this day. Father God, we come before the throne of grace to tell you thank you for a new day. We thank you for knowledge and understanding. We ask you to help us to transmute our minds that we may be able to manifest and to do the things that you have greatly ordained us to do. So Father God, as we walk through the Kabbalion, we ask that you, your Son Jesus and the Holy Ghost, come with us, that we may get clear understanding and divine inspiration from what we are learning and how to rightfully divide and apply the word of truth into our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The reason we are in the Kabbalion is because, like I've always said, the Lord gave us so many different methods of learning things. And all of it is to get in closer contact with Him. We are in the Kabbalion because of this. Our minds need to be transmuted and opened. There are some of you who are awake, and there are a lot of you who are not. So that's why we study to show ourselves approved. Let's get into the divine paradox and see what the Kabbalion says about the divine paradox. Lincoln down here. Recipe. Okay, let's see what we got here. The divine paradox. The half wise, recognizing the comparative unreality of the universe, imagine that they may defy its laws. Such are vain and presumptuous fools. And they are broken against the rocks and torn asunder by the elements by reason of their folly. The truly wise, knowing the nature of the universe, use the law against laws, the higher against the lower, and by the art of alchemy, transmute that which is undesirable into that which is worthy and thus triumph. Mastery consists not in abnormal dreams, visions, and fantastic imaginings or living, but in using the higher forces against the lower forces, escaping the pains of the lower planes by vibrating on higher levels. Transmutation, not presumptuous denial, is the weapon of the master per the Kabbalion. The half-wise, 
<laughs> the half wise. Let's get into this. This is the paradox of the universe, resulting from the principle of polarity, which manifests when the all begins to create. So when God gets ready to create, this is the paradox in which he uses. He uses higher things to create the things on the lower planes. He stays on a higher vibration to avoid the low vibration emotions and feelings. He turns things that are no longer good or of any use to him into things that are positive. He transmutes energy and his mind. In order to bring a more positive outcome. The all begins to create. Hearken to it. For its points. The difference between. Half wisdom. And wisdom. While the infinite all. The universe. Its laws. Its powers. Its life is a phenomena or as things witnessed in the mind witnessed in the state of meditation or dreams while the infinite all the universe its laws its power its life its phenomena or as things witnessed in the state of meditation or dreams yet to all that is finite the universe must be treated as real and life and action and thought must be based thereupon. Accordingly, although with an ever understanding of the higher truth. So, read that one more time for y'all. While the infinite all, comma, the universe universe, comma, its laws, comma, its power, comma, its life, comma, its phenomena, comma, are as things witnessed, 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 observed in the state of meditation or dreams yet to all that is finite meaning within the universe must be treated as real and life and action and thought must be based upon on that reality. Accordingly, although, within an ever understanding of the higher truth. So with your knowledge of what you know about the higher truth, when you begin to manifest, and you hearken to those points, the things of your dreams and manifest manifestations are the power of of the all which take place in your mind. Your power, your ability to do things, all the phenomena that you will be able to create will all transmute in your mind. For in order to manifest, you must first see it in your mind. You must. This is important. You must see it here. For to speak it here, you have to see it here. I wish to manifest a financial business and I want it to be fruitful. And in your mind's eye, you see your business fruitful. You see it. Just as clear as day. You can see it. You can see people coming in your door. You can see things happening. You can see them. When you close your physical eye and open up your third eye into your consciousness, it will seem so real it will scare you. Because you'll be saying, no, 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 this can't be. Yes, 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 it can. 
Because when you understand that you are the result of God's manifestation from his imagination. And therefore, in this paradox, it's trying to teach you as a divine individual, you have the power to create. And in your, in, in, in your finite mind, you must look at things as a reality instead of as just philosophies. These are realities. The ability to manipulate energy and manipulate the power of your mind. How well can you focus? Get clarity. Because when you understand that in your mind you manifest the I in me. The me is there to look at the things that the I does. The I is the the I is the one who creates. The me is the one who has the dreams and the manifestations. The I keeps the me in check. The I looks at what the me wants to do and says, I see what me wants. But is it a reality scope? Are the things that you want to manifest things of reality? Things that can actually come into fruition? That's the big question. What are you manifesting? Each according to its own plane and laws, where the all to imagine that the universe were indeed reality. Then woe to the universe. For there would be then no escape from lower or higher divine work. Then, the, then would the universe become a fixity and progress would become impossible. Where the all to the imagine were the all to imagine that the universe were indeed reality. Then woe to the universe. If the all viewed reality or imagined that the universe were indeed real, woe to the universe. It says, woe to the universe. For there would be no escape from the lower to the higher. Which means you will be stuck in the lower energies. You will never get to ascend to the higher. That's why he says, whoa. Divine work. Meaning the things that go up are divine work. You're reaching for God. It's divine. Then would the universe become a fixity. Meaning that the universe will never change. It will always stay constant. The same. No changing. No vibrations. None of that. Just fixed energy. And if the fixed energy was negative, no matter what you do, that fixed energy would be negative. If the all were to imagine that these things were reality indeed. But that's to show you that they're not. They're not reality. The all has created this. We are living in the mind of the all. The all is God. We are living in his mind. These we are his creations. And this world is our stage. And if man. Owing to half wisdom, if man, owing to half wisdom, acts and lives and thinks of the universe as merely a dream akin to his own finite dreams, then indeed does it so become for him. So, because in this world of, of circumstances and situations and realities in which we are accepting as realities and not the fact that this is the matrix. 
But these realities that we have accepted, we only get to escape them in our dreams because in our dreams is the infinite information. The infinite possibilities are all part of our dreams. And these dreams are akin to your finite nature. Then indeed does it mean, and then indeed does it so become for him, and like a sleepwalker, he stumbles ever around and around in a circle making no progress. And that's what I mean about being awa awakened. Because until you are awakened, this is exactly what happens to you. You are walking through this life sleep. You are moving through this life without being aware of what's going on. Because you are asleep. And when you open this up and live in the now and feel the emotions of the now and know the difference between your ex memories, your imaginations, your experiences, and begin to operate in the now, you are sleepwalking. And I'm trying to wake you up. Push it. Come on, get up. Get up. Realize what's happening. Wake up. Make a conscientious decision that you're going to do A or B. This is a time of choice. That's what's happening. It's choosing time. You got to choose what side you're going to play on. We choose God choosing up teams. Rather, you should be choosing up team because not to make a choice is to make a choice. So it's better to make the choice with knowledge than to walk sleeplessly through life and allow life to make your choice for you. Become aware, awakened, and a conscious. Stop being unconscious. Become conscious. The awakening is enlightenment. Enlightenment is realizing that's my breath. I look at the trees. I acknowledge the greenery of the trees. I acknowledge the beauty that God has placed before me. I acknowledge that in my mind I can dream. And if I focus my energies, I can create. Here's mutation. So, this morning, this paradox that we're talking about is called the divine paradox. And it's talking about the difference between reality. And what you perceive reality to be. So. Uh, hmm. It says being forced into an awakening at last. By his falling. Bruised. And bleeding all over the natural laws. So you will eventually get to the point where you will come into awareness of what the laws are. You will come into these awarenesses because God has it ordained that way. You know, He means for us to understand the divine paradox, He means for us to manifest with a knowing. He opens up your consciousness so that you can have intuition and you can see and discern and you can operate on higher vibrations instead of staying on the lower. For in order for you to manifest, you must lower from you must vibrate from the higher energies in order to pull from the higher energies and not vibrate on the lower. So Divine Paradox. Read it one more time for you before I close this message. The Divine Paradox. The half wise recognize the comparative unreality of the universe. Imagine that they have, that they may defy its laws. Such are vain and presumptuous fools. You can't defy the laws of the universe, the laws of gravity. Certain laws in the universe that God has set up. Because remember, this is order. And they are broken against the rocks and torn asunder by the elements by reason of their folly. So because you operate in ignorance, you go out there trying to do stuff in the universe that you ain't got no business to do. And you will wreck. God says you will wreck. 
the truly wise, knowing the nature of the universe, knowing the nature of the universe, knowing the nature of the universe, the nature of the air, the nature of fire, the nature of wind, the nature of water, the nature of man in this universe. You must know universal law. You must know vibration to vibration, pole to pole. Universal laws. The truly wise know the know the nature of universal of the universe, and they use the law against the laws. The higher energies against the lower energies, and the art of alchemy to transmute the art of alchemy to transmute that which is undesirable into that which is desirable the art of alchemy is to Trying to transmute some stuff. It's the art of alchemy. Transmute. This is your most powerful weapon. I keep telling y'all. When you learn how to discipline this right here, when you learn how to see what God wants you to see through this right here, and then when you start listening to the intuition back here. And start operating in the way that God wants you to. You're going to find that your ebbs and flows are a lot less choppy. So, on that note, we will pick up the Divine Paradox in the next teaching. But until then, the half-wise recognizing the comparative unreality of the universe and imagine that they may defy its laws, such are vain and presumptuous. The truly wise, knowing the nature of the art of alchemy, transmute that which is undesirable into that which is desirable. And that's what I'm going to leave you with from the divine paradox of the Kabbalah. You want to stay blessed till the next day because Bye bye. So me by me. If you like the content, check subscribe. Come on back, let's learn some more stuff. Okay? Stay blessed.